This module provides knowledge of the aircraft components, equipment, systems operation, limitations, and malfunctions to ensure competent performance during flight in icing conditions. The Dash 8 Q400 is certified to fly into known icing conditions. The ice and rain protection system consists of ice detection, de-icing, anti-icing, and rain removal. A system of ice detection probes permanently installed in the aircraft nose section detects ice accumulation and presents the information to the flight deck. Messages display on the engine display or ED when icing occurs. Engine Bleed Air operates a conventional inflatable de-icing boot system to shed ice buildup from the leading edges of the wings, horizontal and vertical stabilizers, and the inlet lips of the engine nacelles. Electrical heating elements using the AC systems provide anti-icing capability. Heated anti-icing system components are angle of attack or AOA vanes left and right, left, right, and standby pedostatic probes, the leading edges of all propeller blades, intake flanges on both engines, and pilot and co-pilot windshield panels, and the pilot's side window panel. Rain removal from the windshields is accomplished by electrically operated windshield wipers. Independent ice detection probes are located on the left and right sides of the aircraft nose section. The ice detection probes vibrate at a natural resonant frequency and any ice accumulation on the probes causes the vibration frequency to increase due to increased rigidity of the probe. With 115 volt AC power available, the aircraft ice detection system automatically activates. Since the system is completely automated, no controls are necessary in the flight deck. The ice protection panel is on the left side of the overhead panel in the flight deck. The reference speeds is a toggle switch having positions of off and increase. Selection of the switch to the increase position results in a white increase reference speed message displayed on the ED. With activation of the switch to increase, the stall protection system, or SPS, adjusts the stall margin for operating in icing conditions. Click on the switch to move to the engine display. When ice is detected on either probe, the ice detected message appears on the ED. The message is directly below the static air temperature and flashes in white reverse video for 5 seconds if the reference speed switch is on increase. After 5 seconds, the message changes to a steady white. The message flashes in yellow if the increase switch is off. Heating elements in the ice detection probes activate automatically with ice detection. The heat melts the ice accumulation on the probes, allowing further ice buildup detection. A failure of both ice detector probes results in the illumination of the caution light ice detection failure on the caution advisory panel. The caution light does not illuminate with the failure of only one detection probe. A one probe failure is recorded in the central diagnostic system for maintenance. Airframe de-icing uses inflatable rubber de-icing boots bonded to the leading edges of the wings, horizontal stabilizer, vertical stabilizer, and the inlet lips of the engine nacelles. The system uses six sets of de-icing boots. Bleed air from the engines provides a constant supply of air for the de-ice system operation. The bleed air for de-icing is available without requiring any bleed air control switch activation. The pressure indicator for the de-ice system is on the aft side of the co-pilot side console. The de-ice pressure indicator is a dual left and right display for respective aircraft sides. Regulated de-icing system pressure is 18 plus or minus 3 psi. A portion of the regulated de-ice pressure is used for inflation of the forward passenger boarding door and the aft baggage compartment door seals. The air also serves to operate the ejector of the aft safety valve for the pressurization system. The airframe de-icing system has provisions for manual or automatic operation. The rotary four-position airframe mode selector switch on the top left corner of the ice protection panel provides for the manual and two modes of automatic de-ice selection. Switch position markings are off, slow, fast, and manual. The slow and fast positions are the two modes of automatic operation. When the dual distribution valves open, the de-ice boots inflate. The dual distribution valves apply suction to the boot sets when not inflated to hold the boots flush with the leading edges. The dual distribution valves have integral heater elements that automatically operate at static air temperatures of 5 degrees Celsius and lower. The dual distribution valves and check valve heaters are under control of the timer and monitor unit or TMU. 
The airframe mode selector placed in the automatic slow or fast positions activate and deactivate the dual distribution valves through the TMU. Click on the heater to see the next indication. Continuous activation of the dual distribution valve heater elements in the event of a TMU failure is possible by selecting the airframe mode selector switch to the manual position. The left and right sides of the airframe deicing system connect together through an isolation valve. During normal operations, the valve remains open, allowing the system to operate as a whole unit. The isolation valve is controlled using the boot air switch on the overhead ice protection panel. The switch at the lower left corner of the panel has two positions, isolation, which indicates that the isolation shutoff valve is closed, and normal, which indicates that the isolation shutoff valve is open. Selecting the normal position ensures adequate de-ice pressure to both airframe sides in the event of single engine operation. Click on the boot air switch to close the isolation valve. The isolation position closes the valve isolating the left and right bleed air supplies to the de-ice boots. The isolation position provides the means of checking the integrity of each boot set on each side individually. It also provides a method of isolating the left and right sides in the event of a system pressure leak. Having the boot air switch in the isolation position requires manual boot operation. Cycling through the boot set inflations, a noticeable lack of adequate pressure during the inflation of a boot set with the boot air switch in the isolation position indicates a possible leak. The automatic boot operation with the airframe mode select switch in the slow position inflates and deflates the boots in a three minute cycle. The inflation time is six seconds for each of the six boot sets for a total inflation period of 36 seconds, followed by a dwell time of 144 seconds before the inflation cycle resumes. The combined time of inflation and dwell time is 180 seconds or three minutes for one complete cycle. The fast position of the airframe mode selector operates the boots automatically in a similar manner as the slow position. The only difference is the length of dwell time. The inflation time remains 36 seconds, followed by a dwell time of 24 seconds, for total cycle time of 60 seconds, or one minute. The timer for the mode select is self-homing. Once a slow or fast cycle begins, the timer completes the inflation, deflation, and dwell cycle before turning off, even if the mode switch is set to off. The automatic mode of de-icing, whether slow or fast, commences inflation starting with boot set 1. Set 1 is two bonded boot segments on each outboard wing leading edge area. Set 2 is just inboard of set 1 and has two segments bonded on each wing leading edge. Set 3 consists of the leading edge boots outboard of the right engine nacelle and inboard of the left engine nacelle. Set 4 is just the opposite of 3, inboard of the right engine nacelle and outboard of the left engine nacelle. Set 5 consists of the inlet lip of the left engine nacelle, the upper leading edge segment of the vertical stabilizer, and the inboard horizontal stabilizer segments. Set 6 is the inlet lip for the right engine nacelle, the lower leading edge segment on the vertical stabilizer, and the outboard segments on the horizontal stabilizer. The ice protection panel provides an aircraft graphic having green indicator lights for boot inflation. The lights for each boot set illuminate as they are inflated. The illumination provides an indication that adequate boot pressure of approximately 15.5 psi is inflating the boot. Operation of the de-ice boots in the manual position with the airframe mode select switch provides a backup if the TMU fails or a system leak develops. The airframe manual select switch on the right upper side of the ice protection panel and opposite of the mode select switch is an 8 position selectable rotary switch. Six positions are for the de-ice boot sets, and two positions are for off. The airframe manual select switch selects the boot set for inflation and keeps the boots inflated for as long as the switch is set to that position. The operator of the switch has in effect become the timer. At the completion of the inflation cycle of all six sets of boots when using the manual mode, observe a 24 second minimum dwell time prior to commencing another inflation cycle. A recommended procedure most operators use in the manual mode of de-icing is to rotate the airframe manual select switch in a counterclockwise direction. By doing so, the cycle commences with the horizontal and vertical stabilizers, then moves forward to the inboard wing and works outward. If a boot leak or failure were in set 1, the outboard set of wing boots, 
This would not allow inflation and would prevent a major lateral imbalance if ice sheds from one side only. To ensure adequate bleed air is available for 15 psi minimum de-ice pressure during descents, holding, and approaches, the application of additional engine power may be necessary to develop higher NL speed. Illumination of the de-ice pressure caution light is an indication of a loss of pressure in the de-ice system. Confirmation of the pressure loss requires checking pressure displays on the de-ice pressure indicator. Illumination of the de-ice pressure caution light occurs with a boot set not fully inflating after the opening of the dual distribution valve, an indication of a boot leak. The caution light may illuminate if the boot set remains inflated after the dual distribution valve closes in which case this indicates a valve malfunction not allowing deflation. The illumination of the de-ice timer caution light indicates a de-ice TMU failure. The de-ice system remains operable using the manual mode. The ice protection system for the propeller uses electrically heated elements bonded to the leading edges of each propeller blade. The elements extend from the blade root outward encompassing 70% of the leading edge. The heating elements are powered by 115 volt variable AC and receive their power from the respective left or right 115 volt variable AC bus. The use of the variable AC electrical power requires that the propeller speed is greater than 400 RPM, so the AC generator is able to generate adequate power. The left AC system powers the de-ice elements of the left propeller, and the right AC system powers the de-ice elements on the right propeller. Control of the propeller DI system uses a rotary three position switch labeled props on the lower left side of the ice protection panel. The switch positions from left to right are test, off, and on. Identical timer monitor control units on each side control the propeller DI system. The units monitor propeller speed, total air temperature, and the propeller de-icing system for faults. It provides the necessary timing and distribution of electrical heating to the propeller to ensure proper ice shedding with changing atmospheric conditions. A selection of on with the props rotary switch activates the propeller de-icing system provided that the total air temperature is at or below 5 degrees Celsius, AC power is available, and NP is greater than 400 RPM. Meeting the conditions required to activate propeller de-ice, the on selection of the prop switch simultaneously heats all six blades of the left propeller first, followed by heating all six blades of the right propeller. The two circular green lights for the propellers at the front of the aircraft graphic on the ice protection panel illuminate when heating occurs on the related propellers. The prop switch is spring-loaded from the test position back to off. For the test, the NP must be greater than 400 RPM to provide 115 volts variable AC. The test function overrides the weight on wheels and TAT circuits for test activation. Holding the switch in the test position activates the propeller de-ice system heating sequence. The heating elements cycle for 7 seconds with the left propeller heating first followed by the right. The green advisory light illuminates as the related propeller heats. A 30 second cooling period is necessary prior to the start of another test. This requirement prevents overheating of the blade elements that have little airflow during a ground test. The propeller de-ice caution light illuminates if a TMCU fails or is not powered. The light illuminates if one or more propeller blade elements are not heating or a major failure of the propeller de-ice system occurs. Integral heating elements in the pitot-static probes prevent ice from accumulating. The three probes are located below the windshields on the aircraft with the number one on the left side, number two on the right side, and the standby on the right side behind the number two probe. Switches labeled pitot static control the activation of the heating elements and are located on the lower section of the ice protection panel. The switches are two position toggles with labels indicating the off position and identifying the switches from left to right as standby one and two. Click on the standby pitot static switch to see the power source. The number one pitot static probe element heat power supply is the left 115 volt variable AC bus C phase. The number two pitot static probe heat power supply is the right 115 volt variable AC bus C phase. The standby pitot static probe heating power source is the right 28 volt DC essential bus. The monitoring and controlling of the probe heaters is a function of separate modules of the TMU. The appropriate caution light pitot heat one pitot heat 2 or pitot heat standby illuminates if the related probe switch is in the off position. 
The caution lights illuminate if the related probe power source or heater element fails. The angle of attack or AOA vane heaters do not have any control switches on the flight deck. Circuit breakers for the left and the right AOA vanes are on the 115 volt variable AC circuit breaker panel. The AOA vane heating elements are powered whenever AC power is available on the related bus. The left AOA vane heater uses the left AC bus and the right AOA vane heater uses the right AC bus. Connection of the vane heaters to their bus is through the TMU. Use caution around AOA vanes if external AC power is connected. The AOA vane heaters do not have a dedicated caution light. Vane heater failure detection relies on the stall protection module. If the stall protection module detects a failure, the pusher system failure and the related number one or number two stall system failure caution lights illuminate. Two 1000 watt electric heaters, a primary and a secondary, are in the intake flanges of each engine. The power source for the heaters is the related left or right 115 volt variable AC bus B phase. The secondary heater energizes automatically if the primary heater fails. Circuit breakers for each left or right intake heater are on the 115 volt variable AC circuit breaker panel. To energize the heaters requires pushing the engine intake switch lights on the ice protection panel. The amber open segment illuminates when the bypass door is open. The open bypass door expels ice that may dislodge from the inlet lip and enter the engine nacelle inlet. The electric intake heater activates automatically and illuminates the amber heater segment if certain conditions exist. The conditions are the bypass door is open, the engine is operating and producing adequate oil pressure, the temperature as measured by a thermostat is at or below 15.6 degrees Celsius and 115 volts variable AC power is available on the respective variable AC bus. When the engine is shut down, the oil pressure sensors prevent heater operation. Thermostats prevent heater operation when the measured temperature is above 15.6 degrees Celsius. Pressing the engine intake switch light with the bypass door open and heater operating causes the following actions. The bypass door closes, the heater deactivates, the amber open heater segments on the switch light extinguish, and the lower green closed segment illuminates to indicate the bypass door is in agreement with the selected switch position. A failure of the primary intake heater does not activate a caution light. However, the fault is recorded in the central diagnostic system for maintenance review. The secondary heater activates automatically with the failure of the primary. If the primary and the secondary heaters fail, the related engine adapter heat 1 or engine adapter heat 2 caution light illuminates. Engine oil heats the aft part of the engine intake flange. The low temperature limit of the green arc on the oil temperature indicator changes from 0 to 65 degrees Celsius with an on or test selection of the prop switch. Remember to maintain engine oil temperature for inlet ice protection. Windshield heat, side window heat, and windshield wiper switches are located on the windshield control panel below the ice protection panel. Electrical heating of both windshields and the pilot side window provides anti-icing and mist prevention. The three position rotary switch on the left side of the windshield control panel selects windshield heat. The warm up position supplies both windshields heating and half power from the left AC bus. Unless recently cancelled by the manufacturer, a restriction is in place on the use of the warm up setting for any operation, either ground or airborne, because of system anomalies. The warm up position is used to prevent thermal stress to the windshield glass because at the normal position the glass can become very hot. The normal position heats each windshield at full power supplied by its related 115 volt variable AC bus left or right. The heat switch for the pilot side window is the pilot side window heat two position toggle on the right side of the windshield control panel. When set to on, power for the pilot side window comes from the right 115 volt variable AC bus. Only the forward part of the side window incorporates the heating elements for anti-icing. Two anti-ice controllers, or AIC, monitor and control the heating elements for the left or right windshield as related. Failure of an anti-ice controller illuminates the windshield control caution light. An overheat condition of either windshield illuminates the windshield hot caution light. The right anti-ice controller monitors and controls the heating element in the pilot side window. An overheat condition in the pilot side window illuminates the side window hot caution light. 
An overheat condition in any of the three heated windows automatically deactivates the affected window heating element. A single wiper switch at the center of the windshield control panel controls both wipers. The rotary switch has four positions, park, off, low, and high. Positioning the selector to off from either the low or high position stops the wiper blade at its existing position. When the spring-loaded switch is held in the park position, the wiper blades move at low speed, stopping automatically at the park position at the lower edge of the windshield. On the pilot side console is a guarded alternate wiper push-button switch light. Pressing the switch light illuminates its green on segment and operates only the pilot's wiper at high speed. Click on the on switch to turn on the wipers. A prod attached to each wiper arm, angled up and forward, is referred to as an ice spigot, providing a means of visual ice accumulation detection. On both pilot side consoles is a windshield wiper ice detect push button that turns on a light that lights the spigot in conditions of darkness. This concludes the ice and rain protection module. This module provides the knowledge base necessary for a solid understanding of the components, controls, indicators, normal and non-normal operation, and limitations of the air conditioning and pressurization systems. The Dash 8Q400 bleed air system is the supply source for the aircraft's environmental system. An air conditioning pack cools the bleed air to a desirable temperature and humidity prior to delivery to the distribution ducting which serves the cabin and flight compartment. The bleed air system also provides the aircraft with pressurization. The air conditioning pack functions as part of the environmental control system. Hot bleed air for the air conditioning pack comes from the engines, or the auxiliary power unit, called the APU, during ground operation. The air conditioning pack incorporates two air cycle machines, or ACMs. The pack uses an integrated single primary heat exchanger and a single secondary heat exchanger for the two ACMs. The design of two ACMs with a single heat exchanger provides a much larger heat exchanger when only one ACM is operating. Ducts supply conditioned air to the cabin and the flight compartment. Engine bleed air flows to the air conditioning system by selecting the bleed switches on the air conditioning control panel to the on position. Ground operations require the engine bleed switches to be off for bleed air to flow to the air conditioning system from the APU. Pressing the bleed air switch light on the APU control panel activates the APU bleed air on. If the engine bleed switches are on, bleed air from the APU is inhibited. The air conditioning packs are in the unpressurized aft equipment bay. A recirculation fan mixes cabin air with the conditioned air from the packs and provides airflow through the ducting back to the cabin and flight compartment. An emergency ram air ventilation system is available to provide flight compartment and cabin ventilation if there is a dual ACM failure resulting in the loss of pressurization. The air conditioning control panel is on the right side of the overhead panel. In addition to controls for the engine bleed air, there are controls for the ACMs, referred to as PACs, temperature regulation controls, a recirculation fan switch, and a selector with a gauge to monitor duct and cabin temperatures. The upper left toggle switch on the panel turns the recirculation fan on and off. The fan is mounted behind the aft baggage compartment with the air conditioning pack. The fan draws air from the passenger cabin through a recirculation filter mounted behind the baggage compartment. The recirculated air mixes with the pack conditioned air and moves through the air distribution system to the cabin and flight compartment. Click the switch to see the next indication. The selection of recirculation is the on position for the fan. The electronic control unit, also called the ECU, controls the fan speed. The fan initially begins at slow speed and the ECU automatically selects high speed when required. By design, the recirculation fan operates at slow speed during engine starts and single ACM operations. At the center of the air conditioning control panel is a three-position rotary gauge selector to select which temperature is displayed on the duct temperature gauge. The knob allows selections of the cabin or flight compartment duct or the cabin temperature for display on the adjacent gauge. The gauge readings display in degrees Celsius. The three positions for the gauge selector are cabin duct, cabin, and flight compartment duct respectively. 
The cabin duct setting displays the cabin air duct temperature. The second position cabin is for the cabin zone temperature received from a mid-cabin sensor. The last position is flight compartment duct is the duct temperature of the flight compartment air supply. The three position pack switches are located below the gauge selector. The switches select the ACMs to an automatic or manual operation mode or to off which shuts down the ACM. The auto position of the pack switches results in the ECU digital channels controlling the flow control and shutoff valve and the respective pack bypass valve. Automatic regulation of the cabin and flight compartment temperatures occur in response to the manually selected inputs from the temperature control knobs. The manual position uses the ECU analog channels which control only the pack bypass valves in response to the manual inputs for cabin and flight compartment temperatures. In the manual operation mode, the flow control shutoff valves remain in a full open configuration. This is because the engine high pressure bleed ports remain closed with the analog channel controlling. Placing both pack switches in the off position results in the ECU closing the flow control shutoff valves, the turbine shutoff valves, and shutting down both ACMs. Setting one pack switch to manual or auto causes the environmental control system controller to open the pack inlet flow control shutoff valves, the related turbine shutoff valves, and the two pack bypass valves. During dual ACM operation, the ECU directs approximately half of the air supply from the left ACM for distribution to the flight compartment. The remaining air from the left ACM flows to the cabin. Total airflow from the right ACM goes to the cabin. Therefore, the cabin receives 75% of the airflow with dual ACM operation. A selection of manual or auto with only one pack switch, for example in single pack operation, operates one selected ACM. During the single ACM operation, the recirculation fan operates at low speed. The airflow output of the air conditioning system is at a reduced flow of approximately 70% of two pack operation. Two rotary selector knobs for setting the cabin and flight compartment temperatures are at the bottom of the air conditioning control panel. The selectors provide controls for both the automatic and manual modes. The ECU interfaces with the panel inputs and provides the necessary configuration for the air pack valves using either the digital or the analog channels. The right knob labeled flight compartment controls the airflow temperature from the left ACM. Keep in mind that half of this airflow also goes to the cabin and the temperature selection for the flight compartment has an effect on the cabin temperature. The left selector for cabin has a detent labeled flight attendant in the full counterclockwise position. Setting the cabin selector to the detent position transfers the control of cabin temperature regulation to the flight attendant control panel in the cabin. Set in the flight attendant detent position, a red advisory light labeled flight attendant control enabled eliminates at the lower right side on the flight attendant control panel. Elimination of the red flight attendant control enabled advisory light on the flight attendant control panel activates the controls necessary to regulate the cabin temperature. Only temperature control is available and temperature adjustment and display selection controls and indicators are on the panel. The ability to direct air to the upper or lower vents in the cabin is not available since the ECU automatically operates a damper controlling the upper and lower air distribution. Zone temperature sensors measure the air temperature in the flight compartment and cabin supply ducts. The ECU controls the temperature of the air leaving the air conditioning pack based on inputs from the duct sensors. The ECU maintains the air temperature within the ducts between 2.8 and 71 degrees Celsius. The actual temperature within the supply duct is dependent upon the related temperature control knob setting. The minimum temperature of 2.8 degrees Celsius prevents ice formation on the air conditioning pack condenser. The ECU receives zone temperatures from sensors in the cabin and the flight compartment. The ECU maintains the cabin and flight compartment temperatures according to the selection set on the related temperature control knob. The normal range for the temperature in the cabin and flight compartment is between 15 and 27 degrees Celsius. A separate sensor located at right side and mid cabin provides the cabin temperature for display on the air conditioning control panel gauge. Air flows from the air conditioning pack through ducts to the cabin and flight compartment. A split duct at the pack outlet divides the cabin and flight compartment conditioned air. The flight compartment air provides pressurization, heating and cooling, and side window demisting. Prior to reaching the flight deck, the duct supplies conditioned air to the aft baggage compartment inlet 
the forward flight attendant position gasper, and the lavatory gasper. Two identical individual distribution systems provide air to the left and right sides of the flight compartment. The single duct splits to the two systems at the flight compartment bulkhead. Each side has upper and lower level outlets. The upper level outlets demist the side windows through three nozzles at each window for the pilot and co-pilot. The lower level outlets deliver air to foot warming piccolo tubes near the rudder pedals, a large torso gasper forward of the side panels, and a fixed grill near knee height. Flow control levers in the flight compartment are located near the window sill. The levers regulate the airflow through the valve that controls the airflow to the side window demisters and the small gasper outlets above the aft end of the pilot and co-pilot side panels. The conditioned air supplied to the cabin provides environmental comfort and pressurization. The duct from the air conditioning pack to the cabin is at the center of the rear pressure dome from where it goes beneath the aft baggage compartment floor, at which point it splits into the upper and lower ducts for each sides of the fuselage. The upper air distribution ducts provide conditioned air to the passenger service unit, also called the PSU gaspers, and the sidewall downwash and the ceiling upwash vents. The other duct is the lower cabin distribution duct supplying the dado panels at floor level along the sidewall. The distribution of air to the upper or lower duct is a function of the distribution damper. The damper, located at the split from the single to upper and lower ducts, automatically positions based on the temperature and cabin supply duct. The right digital channel of the ECU provides the control to actuate the electric motor driving the distribution damper. The damper valve remains in its last position in the event of a failure in the right digital channel or the electric motor. Three position switches for the distribution damper provide discrete signals to the ECU. The switches provide the positioning data for full warm, middle, or full cool. The ECU uses signals from the temperature sensor in the cabin zone supply to regulate the mode warm, standard, or cool. During heating operations, most air flows to the lower dado panels and some to the upper PSU panels. The opposite applies for cooling with most air flow to the upper PSU panels and less to the lower dado panels. During standard temperatures, the ducts receive a balanced air flow. For the standard distribution, the distribution is 50% for upper and 50% for lower. For cooling, the distribution is 70% upper and 30% lower. For heating, the distribution is 30% upper and 70% lower. An inlet and an outlet ventilation valve provide for air circulation in the aft baggage compartment. The valves operate automatically and close with the loss of electrical power or if smoke is detected in the compartment. Valve position status is visible on the fire protection panel. The left and right digital channels of the ECU control the on and off function of the related left or right pack, which is the same as ACM. The control closes the related turbine shutoff valves to turn the system off. The air conditioning system will shut down and close the flow control shutoff valves if both pack switches are in the off position, the ECU built-in test function detects an unacceptable condition on both sides, or an over temperature is detected on both sides by two or more pack over temperature switches. If the cabin pack hot or flight compartment pack hot caution light illuminates, the associated pack shuts down. Also, if the cabin duct hot or flight compartment duct hot caution light illuminates, the associated pack is shut down. A pack overheat condition shuts down the related pack and illuminates the related cabin pack hot or flight compartment pack hot caution light. The caution light remains illuminated until the condition is cleared and the related pack switch is in the off position. An overheat condition in either the flight compartment duct or the cabin duct closes the turbine shutoff valves for the related pack. The condition illuminates the related flight compartment duct hot or cabin duct hot caution light and the related pack bypass valve modulates towards closed based on signals received from the ECU. This action is to aid in cooling the duct. The related caution light remains illuminated until the related pack switch is at off and the condition or the built-in test faults have cleared. An external ground air conditioning connection is on the aircraft aft right side. A circular door provides access to a connector for hookup of a ground cart duct to the aircraft duct. A spring-loaded check valve is inside the aircraft duct and opens under pressure from the external provided airflow. The check valve remains closed when there is no pressure. The environmental control system's supply duct carries the conditioned air to the cabin in the flight compartment. Click on the ground connection cart to see the cart hookup.
Engine bleed air, processed through the air conditioning system and distributed to the cabin and flight compartment, provides aircraft pressurization. A system of cabin pressure controls maintain the desired cabin pressure by governing the outflow valve regulating the rate of airflow from the pressurized portion of the aircraft. The pressurized area of the aircraft extends from the forward pressure bulkhead at the front of the flight compartment to the aft pressure dome at the aft end of the aft cargo compartment. The cargo compartments and the underfloor areas are pressurized. The pressurization control panel on the flight compartment overhead panel provides the controls for setting and controlling the cabin pressure using different modes of outflow valve operation and indications when a system fault occurs. The aircraft has three outflow valves. The primary valve is the aft outflow valve backed up with an aft safety valve for positive and negative pressure relief. Both of these are on the aft pressure dome. A forward safety valve is on the forward pressure bulkhead. The modes of control for the pressurization system are automatic, manual, emergency, smoke removal, and dump. Pressurization control is the primary function of the electrically operated aft outflow valve. It can operate in the automatic or manual modes and has the ability to dump the pressurization. The forward safety outflow valve functions for emergency operation or for smoke removal from the flight compartment. The forward and aft safety outflow valves have positive and negative pressure relief valves. The pressurization control panel has a fault light segment. When electrical power is first turned on, a full power up self test of the system occurs and the fault light is lighted momentarily. Detection of a failure in the system results in the steady illumination of the amber fault light. The auto mode provides all pressure scheduling from takeoff to landing using the cabin pressure controller, also called the CPC. The auto mode requires the three position auto manual dump switch on the pressurization control panel to be in the auto position. This position automatically modulates the aft outflow valve maintaining a pre-programmed cabin altitude schedule. Aircraft pressurization does not occur on the ground if the power lever angles are less than 60 degrees because the aft outflow valve positions to fully open. The aft safety valve also opens on the ground with the APU operating or at least one engine operating at idle. The rotating knob labeled landing altitude at the lower left corner on the pressurization control panel sets the field elevation for landing. The elevation setting displays on the landing altitude indicator above the knob. The landing elevation is set prior to takeoff. The aft outflow valve modulates as necessary to provide for the takeoff sequences of pre-pressurization and flight aboard after takeoff once the power levers are at angles greater than 60 degrees. The aft outflow valve moves from the fully open position as the takeoff commences. An automatic pre-pressurization occurs to prevent a pressure bump during the takeoff sequence. The cabin pressurizes to 400 feet below the elevation of the takeoff location. The pre-pressurization rate is 300 feet per minute. This requires selection of the bleed air switches to the on position. A takeoff without bleed air on results in the aft outflow and the aft safety valves closing. The pre-pressurization remains in effect for up to 10 minutes after takeoff as long as the scheduled cabin altitude is higher than that of the theoretical cabin altitude or for takeoff above 8,000 feet, the actual aircraft altitude is less than takeoff elevation plus 5,000 feet. The CPC remains in the takeoff mode for the 10 minutes with the pre-pressurization to accommodate a flight aboard after takeoff. This allows for a return to field landing and no requirement to reset the landing altitude. The CPC controls the pressurization schedule automatically after the completion of the takeoff sequence with the auto mode selected. Application of the rate of descent is automatic and varies with the actual aircraft descent rate. The three scenarios are, if the aircraft is descending 2300 feet per minute or less, the cabin descends at 300 feet per minute, a normal descent. If the aircraft is descending at an increased rate, giving the cabin a descent rate between 300 to 1000 feet per minute. If the aircraft descent rate is greater than 3,000 feet per minute, the cabin descent will be at 1,000 feet per minute. Click on the airplane to see rate of descent. Pressurization control is automatic during landing. 
the cabin is unpressurized upon landing if the landing altitude is set above the actual landing field elevation. The cabin remains pressurized upon landing if a lower than field elevation altitude is set for landing. After a pressurized landing, the cabin descends to the field elevation before bleeding to ambient pressure as the aft safety and outflow valves fully open. Employment of the manual mode of pressurization modulates the aft outflow valve if the automatic mode fails or the fault light illuminates. On the pressurization control panel, the auto manual dump switch position is set to the center manual position. The manual differential toggle switch is then moved either to decrease or increase. The decrease opens the outflow valve, decreasing the cabin differential pressure, increasing cabin altitude. The increase position closes the outflow valve, increasing the differential pressure to decrease the cabin altitude. On the overhead panel to the left of the pressurization control panel is the pressurization indicator panel. From the left on the panel is the differential pressure indicator, the cabin altitude indicator, and the cabin rate of climb indicators. A cabin altitude to aircraft altitude relationship scale is on the panel plate above the indicators. The forward safety outflow valve provides a backup means of pressurization control if the aft outflow valve fails or is undesirable for use. Rotating the forward outflow rotary selector clockwise opens the forward safety valve. Opening the valve decreases the cabin pressure and increases the cabin altitude. The forward outflow control has three labels around the selector, closed at full counterclockwise, increase at the horizontal position, and open at the full clockwise rotation position. On the co-pilot's side panel is a forward safety valve selector guard. It is yellow and black and covers the two-position rotary selector. Lifting the guard and rotating the selector to open fully opens the forward safety outflow valve. This action dumps the cabin pressure immediately. Selecting the auto manual dump switch on the pressurization control panel to dump fully opens the aft outflow valve dumping cabin pressure. The switch position of dump keeps the aft outflow valve fully open and provides for maximum aft smoke removal. Using the forward outflow knob on the pressurization control panel, you can evacuate smoke from the flight compartment without depressurizing the aircraft. When auto is selected, the aft outflow valve closes in order to maintain the cabin pressure, sending the excess air and smoke out through the forward safety outflow valve. When the aircraft is in flight and not pressurized, outside ram air ventilates the cabin and flight compartment. Ram air enters through NACA vents in the dorsal fin, passes a check valve, and enters the supply ducts downstream from the air conditioning pack to the cabin and flight compartment. Ram air ventilation requires the manual selection of the auto manual dump switch and holding the manual differential switch to increase for 50 seconds. Then the forward safety valve must be opened by turning the forward outflow knob fully clockwise or turning the forward safety valve selector to the open position. This action fully closes the aft outflow valve and opens the forward safety valve and outflow valve allowing the air to exhaust through it. The CPC maintains a maximum cabin pressure differential of 5.46 psi providing a cabin altitude of 8,000 feet at an aircraft altitude of 25,000 feet. Pressure limiters open the forward and aft safety valves if the cabin pressure differential reaches 5.8 plus or minus 0.15 psi to release the excess pressure. Both safety valves have negative pressure relief valves that operate at a negative pressure of minus 0.5 psi, preventing aircraft damage from external atmospheric pressure. A cabin altitude of 9,800 feet or more illuminates the red cabin pressure warning light. Three chimes accompany the light illumination as the master warning light illuminates. The maximum cabin differential pressure limit for taxi takeoff and landing is 0.5 psi. Normally, the bleed air switches are in the on minimum position for landing. This concludes the air conditioning and pressurization module.